Uh, obviously, my name is uh, John Bryant, uh, and I have uh, been involved uh, with uh, UAC uh, since about 1978 or so. Uh, and uh, I've been doing a fair amount of uh, research in a number of different uh, areas uh, for many, many, many years. Uh, and so uh, what I'm going to do, I passed out a packet to you and uh, will come close to sort of walking uh, through that uh, in terms of sources utilized. Uh, you'll see the uh, U.S. Census's uh, 1850 uh, slave schedules for Alabama and Kentucky, uh, and the U.S. Census's 1860 uh, slave schedules uh, for uh, Alabama and Kentucky. Uh, and then uh, Frederick Bancroft, and uh, you have not, and I suspect uh, most of you may not have uh, heard because these are, uh, uh, oh, uh, sort of original uh, documents. Uh, Fred uh, Rick Bancroft uh, uh, wrote a book, uh, Slave Trading in the Old South, uh, that uh, is uh, one of the uh, resources that almost everybody who is who is as old as I am uh, sort of cites. Uh, Wilma Dunaway, uh, Slavery in the American Mountain South. Uh, and if you've uh, not uh, encountered Wilma Dunaway, uh, you should. Uh, and she is someone that I'll make some reference to as we go along. Uh, another uh, older one is uh, Eric McKittrick, uh, uh, Slavery Defended, and uh, he is the editor of the uh, book uh, uh, citing the uh, defenders of slavery uh, in uh, the 1840s, 1850s, and up to the Civil War. Uh, uh, I would call particular attention uh, to George Fitzhugh, uh, F-I-T-Z-H-U-G, uh, and uh, Thomas Dew, uh, D-E-W, uh, who is an economist and uh, makes the economic case uh, for slavery and why it was uh, indispensable. Uh, there is uh, John Ensco, who is the editor uh, of uh, Appalachian and Race, the Mountain South from Slavery to Segregation. Uh, and then uh, there is a uh, table, uh, and I will talk at uh, sort of great length uh, from that table. Uh, it is uh, the Hatcher and McGee Negro book. Uh, Hatcher and McGee uh, operated a uh, slave trading house uh, in Columbus, Georgia. Uh, and we stumbled upon the account book uh, where he lists all of his transactions from 1858 through 1860. Uh, and I, I stumbled upon that, I said, originally. Uh, because I was in Columbus, Georgia, uh, trying to do some research, uh, and uh, got to the archives in Columbus State University, and uh, there was uh, uh, his uh, book. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, Benjamin Fitzpatrick, uh, Negroes for Sale, the Slave Trade in Antebellum, Kentucky. Uh, if you haven't uh, read it, uh, uh, you should. Uh, it's a dissertation, the dissertation that he uh, did uh, to complete his uh, PhD uh, at uh, Notre Dame. And last, Constance and Ned Sublett, The American Slave Coast, 
a history of the slave breeding industry. And so uh, those were uh, sources uh, that I utilized over the years because I indicated that I've been at this for uh, years in, in one sense. Uh, I have been attempting to reconcile what I deem to be inconsistencies and contradictions in the American narrative from my high school years to the present. I had an American history textbook entitled The History of a Free People. The mere title of the book denied slavery as a critical component of America's history, and those who were enslavers and those who were enslaved. Uh, and this was uh, in my American history course at Withrow High School uh, in 1953. Uh, students attending public schools in Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, were assigned a novel um, by Marjorie Rawlings any of you entitled The Yearling? Wow. Uh, the Yearling. A line in The Yearling read, My name is Sam. I don't give a damn. I'd rather be a nigger than a poor white man. Uh, that was... So that's where my name is Sam came from. Well, I'm not, I, I can't uh, <laughs> uh, uh, say where... It means Southern Appalachian migrant. Uh, well, in, uh, in the use uh, that it in, eventually. In, 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 in some usages, uh, 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 I am uh, not prepared uh, to say this is the original okay. that was meant for everybody. But I was a graduate student in a master's level course taught by Professor Jean Lewis in the summer of 1961. Now, the title of the course was The American Civil War. The question carrying the most weight on the final examination was tell the benefit of slavery to the American Negro. Now, obviously, I had to ask myself, uh, how badly do I need a grade? Uh, uh, I uh, responded, and we'll get into that in a, in a little bit more. Uh, uh, my grandmother was born a slave. For me in 1961, to tell how she benefited from being enslaved makes no sense. Mm -hmm. I, you'd have to dig my grandmother up and ask her how she benefited from being enslaved. I uh, said, I don't need a grade this badly. Uh, and I got a C in a graduate level course, which is equivalent to plunking. Uh, uh, Jean Lewis became the dean of the College of Arts and Science and the provost of the University of Cincinnati. Okay. Uh, and then uh, I've recently had uh, someone indicate that blacks and mulattoes enslaved in Appalachia compared with those held in bondage were in a better situation than those enslaved outside of Appalachia. Uh, what I hope to convince you of is that slavery, wherever it was, was cruel and inhumane. Okay. So that's the... Uh, wherever it is. Hmm? Wherever it is. Is cruel and inhumane. 
Let me, and let me, let me uh, uh, add one other thing. I was going to add it at the end, but I'll add it up front because you'll see something in uh, the uh, back uh, that is uh, anti-slavery voices in Appalachia. Uh, so, you know, the David Barrows, uh, the uh, John Tees, the John Crow, and all of those, uh, certainly those individuals. Uh, were there, uh, and they are uh, worthy of uh, being James Burney, are worthy of being uh, recognized for their stand against slavery without question. Uh, now, Anytime you feel moved. Well, could I just ask who did, what was the name of the teacher for your graduate course? Uh, Jean Lewis. Okay, Doc, so she was. No, the, not he. he. It's not she, he. He. Uh, Dr. Jean Lewis. And he was the person who was eventually made president? Absolutely. Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, I, let me digress a little bit. Uh, and it taught me. Uh, something uh, about ten years uh, later, uh, I uh, went to a discussion that was held uh, at the uh, Cincinnati uh, Art Museum. Uh, and moderating the panel was Jean Lewis. Now, back when I submitted papers to him in the 1960s, 61, uh, and I would cite W.E.B. Du Bois, and I'd get a C on the paper, and not a credible historian, no, or Benjamin Quarles, uh, not a Incredible historian. Uh, when I got to the panel discussion that was taking place, and he was up there extolling <laughs> W.E.B. Du Bois, uh, and uh, what it taught me uh, that C is still on my transcript. Uh, he can grow and evolve, <laughs> and, and 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 let me be clear. Uh, I think uh, that when uh, we discover uh, something new, uh, clearly we need to recognize it. Wait a minute. Uh, uh, what I uh, said here. Uh, was inaccurate. Mm -hmm. I called him up, uh, well, probably about 15 years ago on the phone. And he uh, was now retired. Uh, but I asked him, what was the name of the book uh, that we used in 1961? And he said, oh, I no longer use that book. Uh, so, uh, that's a digression, but uh, uh, I said, any time you really want to uh, uh, stop and ask a question, by all means, uh, or make a comment. Uh, uh, the, would you flip to the section uh, that is John Grant's forebears in the Southern Appalachian Mountain region? And, and there should be census tables. Uh, the uh, first one, I think, is Nathaniel McPhil. Uh, Nathaniel McPhil uh, was a slaveholder. Uh, he was. Uh, from Abbeville, uh, South Carolina, 
and then from Abbeville, South Carolina, uh, made his way to Coweta, Georgia. Uh, and then uh, from Coweta, Georgia, uh, to Coosa County in Alabama. Okay. Uh, Coosa County, Alabama. And in uh, 1860, uh, he had two, uh, two slaves, a female, I believe 24 years of age, he had three slaves, a female, uh, 23 or 4 years of age, uh, a one year old uh, male mulatto, and a uh, 20 year old, I believe, uh, male black. And what I'm, what I'm going to do Uh, would you find this page? Oh, you turn right to it. <laughs> That's it right there. If you don't have it, uh, uh, that's it. Is it before or after the page we were looking? Oh, here it is. Uh, in 1840, uh, John Dawson had eight slaves, and I've uh, got three of them uh, highlighted. Uh, uh, Clark, Sarah, and Matilda. Now, in 1840, uh, they did not give uh, precise sort of ages, they, they lumped them together under 10 and so forth. Uh, John Dawson died between 1840 and 1850. And uh, by the time 1850 uh, came along, uh, he had 10 slaves. In other words, uh, two were born uh, between 1840 and 1850. Uh, he uh, gave his slaves to his children. Hmm. So uh, he gave uh, a 16-year-old, who was then a 16-year-old, which he wouldn't have, wouldn't have been at the time that uh, uh, he gave her, uh, to his daughter Mary. Uh, and Mary marries uh, James McDill. Mm -hmm. And then he gave uh, to his daughter Eleanor a 12 year old female and a 10 year old uh, male. Uh, the a 12 year old female becomes Matilda. Uh, in 1860, they have now uh, settled in Coosa County. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nathaniel McBeal has married Eleanor McBeal. And she has a two year old male mulatto whose name is Dan. And uh, she also uh, has uh, a 20-year-old male. Uh, I'll skip ahead quickly for you. Uh, Matilda McBill is my great-grandmother. Okay. Uh, and uh, after slavery, in 1870, uh, Matilda McBeal uh, marries, or is married, 
the green massengill. That green massengill is my great grandfather. Uh, both Matilda and Sarah ended up giving birth to mulatto children. Hmm? So, <laughs> so, so uh, 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 well, let, let me go ahead. Uh, uh, Green Massengill uh, is enslaved by Stokely B. Massengill. Uh, you need to flip the page. And, uh, and find Stokely Massengill. Stokely Massengill uh, was uh, born in Tennessee. Uh, then uh, came into Alabama. Had no slaves in 1840. He uh, marries uh, Mary Jane uh, in 1842. Uh, in 1850, uh, they now have uh, three or four older and a four-year-old Mulatto, Green Massengill, born in 1846. Okay. Uh, two things. Uh, one, when someone got married, uh, they often received a wedding gift consisting of slaves. Uh, uh, once married, uh, the women have mulatto children. And enslaving in many cases their own offspring or their children's offspring. Okay. Is that making sense? Sure, well, uh, go ahead. Marie. So both the white men and the African men and the... No, 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 no. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, it's uh, black women right. with white men, e either the husband or the husband's children. Okay. Uh, are, are we all right so far? Uh, uh, then uh, switch to uh, Milton Frazier. Uh, Milton Frazier was born in Chatham, North Carolina. Had no slaves when he's in Chatham, North Carolina. He was an overseer. Uh, he and his wife, Polly, had a number of children. Polly apparently died. Uh, and uh, he uh, then uh, leaves uh, North Carolina Chatham and makes his way uh, to Talladega County, 
Fayetteville and Talladega County. Talladega County and Coosa County are adjacent to each other. Just like so. Um, he now has a new wife. Uh, whether he picked up the children, whether she brought the children, or the slave children, or the, the slaves, because there are two adult uh, women there, and, uh, and then younger uh, children. In 1870, uh, the uh, black children are uh, still with him, 1870. Uh, and there are two children that were born between 1862 and 1870. That's in bold print. It's in bold print for two reasons. Notice that they're mulattoes. Uh, what I think happened uh, William's, uh, uh, Milton's older son, William, who was not with them when they came from Chatham, North Carolina to Fayetteville, now appears on the scene uh, living with his sister. Uh, William is uh, 30 years old. Uh, the first bold print is my grandmother on my father's side. Mm -hmm. uh, my belief is that William appears and fathers uh, those two children. It is plausible, can't prove it plausible, uh, that in giving birth to the younger one, the mother died. Childbirth, and, and that happened uh, frequently. Uh, at that time period. Now, uh, it, you know, it's very unlikely that it happened, but uh, uh, back uh, in the 1840s, 50s, and 60s, uh, uh, no uh, doctors uh, de de delivered by midwives and uh, all sorts of uh, things like that. So, uh, uh, that's uh, John Bryant's history. Uh, Is it your supposition that one of the younger, like the teenagers, or the parents, uh, for the, of the mother? Uh, no, one of one of the uh, two older adults. adults who are gone uh, in the eight in the eighteen seventy census was taken. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, now, what I do believe, uh, I'll, I'll give you what is a plausible uh, Caroline uh, in 1880 has two children, mulattoes, living nearby uh, that very well might be William's children as well. All right. Uh, 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 what uh, sort of what you do? You start out and you say, "This is possible. Okay. This is plausible. This is it." Uh, as you uh, move along in terms of uh, degrees of confidence, uh, possible, plausible. 
uh, this is it. Uh, it ties in on two or three different lines. Uh, uh, my father uh, recognized Georgia, Caroline, uh, Gillum, and Dovey as his aunts. They were half uh, sisters uh, to Ella uh, and to what was the youngest one? Is it Fanny? Uh, Fanny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, that's it. So uh, that's uh, uh, my background. Uh, so then I began to ask the question, uh, is this just something that is peculiar to John Brown? Uh, that's when I uh, went to Columbus, Georgia. And would you now turn back to that Columbus, Georgia page that you have? Uh, Hatcher and McGahey. It's the second page in after. Uh, this is from the uh, from the uh, slave holders book. Uh, covering the uh, years 1958, 59, and 1960. Uh, sold 129 males, 166 females, uh, three couples, and 59 mothers and children. All right. uh, and now, of the 295 males and females sold separately, the age is given for 90. 30% of them were children. Mm -hmm. 90 of the, uh, what about three, three, uh, 57, uh, were children. Uh, if you were to go, uh, to, uh, Frederick, uh, Bancroft and slave trading in the old South, uh, he, would say, yes, when I went through, I found uh, that children as young as nine years old were sold. Uh, obviously, uh, John Bryant looks out and says, anywhere, no matter where, Slavery is in operation. It's cruel and inhumane. Uh, uh, women, obviously, uh, available uh, for uh, the slave master, the slave master's children. Uh, how can this be? anything but cruelty and, in, and inhumane. Uh, let me stop for a second. In, in, anybody have any questions or comments? Uh, this is sort of how I went about doing uh, what I did uh, to uh, get uh, me to this point.
is there a direct connection between Hatcher McGee account book and your family, or is this just no? Uh, well, uh, because I I went there mm -hmm. looking to see if I could find uh, such uh, um, because uh, uh, many of the uh, slaves. Uh, apparently came through Columbus, Georgia. Uh, and there is a person living in Sacramento, which is in Coosa County, uh, directly across, essentially from Columbus, Georgia, who was a slave driver. Uh, he would pick up the slaves in Columbus, Georgia, and then distribute them, drop them off, all the way across uh, Alabama, mm -hmm. Mississippi, to Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and I uh, met a person uh, in Rockford, Alabama, her name was Inez Warren. And Inez Warren, white, she was the great granddaughter of Stokely D. Massengill, who had my great grandfather, Green, as a slave. And Inez was very useful, uh, Miss Warren, because she's a little. I'm old, and she's about 10 years older than I am. Uh, but she was, uh, uh, and she's the one uh, that told me that John McElrath uh, was a slave driver who uh, delivered slaves you know, on consignment, picked them up, and delivered them all the way uh, from uh, Columbus, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, and Texas. Uh, a wonderful lady. Uh, when she sat down, she uh, said, yeah, well, you and I are probably related. Uh, and then uh, she said, uh, in uh, 1963, when Bull Connor uh, was in Birmingham hosing down those young people. I was in Birmingham as well. I was teaching uh, black kids how to play the piano. And then she went over to her piano and she sat down. And she said, uh, this is how whites play Amazing Grace. And this is how blacks play Amazing Grace. Uh, that when I was a little girl uh, in Kellington, which is near Sacapatoy, uh, we lived across the street from the black church. And on Wednesdays, and they would have their choir rehearsals. And so I sat and listened. And so that's how uh, I learned uh, to play and to appreciate. And that's how I can sit down and say, okay, if I go to a white church and play Amazing Grace, this is how. If you go to a black church, this is how. Uh, you cannot interact uh, with each other without uh, getting some cross-fertilization uh, there. Uh, are, are we all right so far? And how am I doing time-wise? Um, it's 2.05. So uh, you know, I'm, I'm, okay, I'm, 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 I'm an old college professor. You're a young college professor. <laughs> college professors like to talk. So, uh,
there's one page and we were looking at it, so let me skip to that. Okay, I'm having difficulty. I have too many pages. Uh, you have a page uh, that you have right there with a yellow dot line uh, down the middle. And what I did, I said, okay, uh, let me uh, go to the state of Kentucky. And uh, those are all the counties in Appalachia, in Kentucky. And let me uh, take uh, those that have only one slate. So uh, only one slate. Why only one slate? Uh, almost a certain uh, what you're doing in one way or another is breaking up the family. Yeah, almost the same. If you have only one slate, uh, it means that you're breaking up the family. Uh, and uh, it should be the next page right there. Uh, and so uh, there were 2,519 uh, such situations. Then I did two things. Uh, one, uh, I said, let me see how many mulattoes are in there. So the next column after the yellow line, that says the number of mulattoes. And is it 304? 302. 302, okay. Good. <laughs> uh, uh, so approximately one in eight. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I said, okay, let me see it. What, what are the ages of these persons? Uh, from zero to 10, from 11 to 20, from 21 to 30, from 31 to 40, and so forth. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, all of a sudden you say, uh, look at the number uh, that is zero to 10, and look at the number that's 11 to 20, uh, and uh, what uh, sort of percentage that is of the totals. And then, let me do something else. Uh, who would be having these mulatto children? Not the males. So let's take them out of the equation and look at it in terms of female. And uh, who is giving uh, birth? Uh, and uh, that's pretty consistent uh, when, when I look at either uh, the total population, and I believe there was 49,000, which you won't see on there, uh, uh, total slaves uh, in Appalachian counties in Kentucky. Uh, the uh, uh, thing that uh, sort of surprised me a little bit um, was the number of slaves sold uh, through uh, Lexington and Louisville. But they came from all over. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I would like to be able to have 
uh, a slave ledger like Hatcher and McGee and McGee uh, to uh, uh, you know here here it is right here uh, but uh, everything that I have read uh, uh, suggests uh, that uh, yes. Uh, sold separately. May it just, is this the little lingo ball? There's somebody out here looking for that. Uh, Tom? Uh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Uh, uh, males, females sold separately. Children sold. Mothers and children sold. Uh, so, I'm sorry. There is absolutely nothing anywhere whether we're talking about slave drivers overseers owners whatever uh, slavery cruel inhumane uh, no way to draw any other conclusion in john brant's estimation uh, katie uh, you know, you uh, said you'd kick me or something when it was time for me to shut up. I, I think this is probably a good chance to do more Q and A if mm -hmm. people have questions. And sure, guys. Okay, this page mm -hmm. shows you. The, the compilation of the, the units where there was only one, uh, one individual slave. in that house, like yes, one uh, on, 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 the, on, on, on the slave record. The okay. slave record shows uh, one slave owned by an individual. Right. And then the forty-nine thousand that you mentioned that you said that, 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 that's like the total of all of the slaves in Kentucky. No, 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 in those Appalachian counties. Just in these Appalachian counties. Yes. Yes. Like so that there might have been folks that owned fifty or twenty. Oh yes. Cans. Oh yes. And all those. Wow. Yeah, that's that, that, that's why I said what I did was to take only those that had one because it is clear that there was no regard for the family. Uh, you know, uh, uh, here, take him, take it. Uh, yeah, uh, if you only have one. Now there's, there's, there's one, uh, one, one caveat that I would make. Uh, if you look in the zero to 10 uh, column, which is the first one, uh, there is, I think, every likelihood uh, for those that are, let's say, one year, two years of age, uh, that the mother died in giving birth. Okay. Uh, but uh, uh, this is value, valuable property. This is my property. Uh, and I'm going to keep this property at least until it gets eight to nine years of age and then sell it or give it away. John, I've, um, I've had the uh, opportunity to look at census records for two of the counties, not, you know, not anything comprehensive, but uh, in Breathitt and Lee, which is not mentioned, and... Uh, well, if Lee's not on there, then it's not listed. Well, it wasn't created until 1870, mm -hmm. so it wouldn't be in the 1850. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So a lot, a yeah. number of the counties were yeah. not mm -hmm. created. Yeah, this, this is this is after the Civil War. So anyhow, um, and I I have never seen more than one listed mm -hmm. for a family. It'll say you know one servant or whatever the mm -hmm. terminology was. Mm -hmm. So, and um, and and I've of course looked at the um, history of my of my own relatives. Some. Mm -hmm. Some own huge tracts of land because they were the original settlers, and um, um, 
I don't think any of my close kin had had slaves that I know of. Um, so what I'm trying, what I'm getting at, is that um, slavery was there, but even even the largest landowners usually didn't have a lot. They might have had one. You know, these in these um, the counties that I'm most familiar with. Um, slaves were, I think, house servants, and they were not agricultural workers because these these were poor white farmers who farmed their own land. And and, and, and two things, Michael. Yeah. Uh, one. Uh -huh. uh, that's why I took uh, one slave and the notion. Uh, that uh, having one slave is an indication of family breakup. Uh, that, that, that's what that one okay. slave is. Absolutely, I, that, I that, understand. That, that's exactly why I, I used uh, the the other thing. You and I'm mentioned. saying that that was the pattern for for these Eastern Kentucky counties. You, you, uh, the only uh, big uh, slave. No, 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 no. That that that, that is not uh, uh, true. That that is. Uh, the pattern uh, uh, that's uh, 2,519 uh, slaveholders with one slave out of a slave population of 49,000 in, 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 in those counties. In, in, in those counties. all of eastern Kentucky there were 49,000. I, I, I can't say uh, all of eastern Kentucky. I can say in those counties. Now, if that's all of Eastern Kentucky, it's, it's the next I think street. it is. Uh, uh, it, uh, it, it is the counties it's, that are listed. It's not the current list of counties, uh, but it's, it, it is. It is the list uh, that was. Uh, now, now, what Wilma uh, Wilma Dunaway, uh, and I mentioned her, uh, fascinating. Uh, she uh, said, uh, "There." were many, many, many whites who did not own land. Uh, a non-land owner will be a non-slave owner. Uh, 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 will Madonaway uh, also uh, argues very strongly uh, that uh, the number of slaves held uh, is not an indicator of uh, physical punishment of slaves. Uh, that, in fact, a uh, one person held slave owner uh, is more likely, because this is mine, uh, an uh, overseer mm -hmm. uh, is not as likely to be beating up on my slave, uh, nor is some stranger uh, likely to be bedding down my slave female. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to just let anybody walk in off of the street and have access to my hands. So, so uh, 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 Wilma Dunaway uh, is uh, someone that I uh, recommend highly. I, I I had uh, Katie read something uh, by George Fitzhugh, uh, who was explaining uh, how women and children, white women and children, uh, were 
that the slave was like the white women and children, only just like you couldn't trust, couldn't give uh, 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 responsibility to white women and children. Uh, uh, you uh, couldn't give it to the slave who was childlike. And then he went on to explain uh, that uh, white men uh, valued their grandchildren uh, more than their spouse and because the grandchildren were dependent and all of that uh, just on uh, whereas the, these women uh, were feisty. <laughs> <laughs> Am I misquoting what he? No. <laughs> uh, so it, 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 that's uh, from Slavery Defended, it, the it, book it, used. Yeah, that, that, that's from Slavery Defended. Uh, and uh, and uh, Thomas Dew essentially uh, anticipated uh, the Civil War. Uh, that uh, You had to be able to sell your surplus slaves uh, uh, and uh, uh, you couldn't compensate uh, the slave owner uh, and free the slaves and uh, colonize them, send them away, which is one of the things that Abraham Lincoln uh, uh, taught. Uh, uh, so, uh, I said I, I would recommend uh, both of those, and also has the religious leaders in there saying why uh, this is what uh, uh, the, uh, the Bible says and so forth. Uh, so, uh, and, and let me go back to where I started out, mm -hmm. that, I, that I was not, uh, I, I'm clearly uh, here to sing the praises of. Uh, those brave David Barrows and John Fees and John Crow and James Burney uh, and uh, uh, their, their amazing stories uh, that the next time I speak, uh, uh, Matilda Lawrence, uh, look that up as a case that took place here in Cincinnati. Uh, and James Burney's involvement. Uh, also, uh, look up uh, Peyton and Violet Polly, P O L L Y, uh, which goes between uh, Kentucky and Ironton, Ohio. Uh, and actually, uh, uh, John Legend. Who uh, you know, you younger people will uh, will know of. Uh, he comes out of uh, the uh, Polly, Peyton Polly line. Uh, it is a fascinating, in my judgment, fascinating uh, story uh, that. Uh, we have to face face up to uh, in all of its dimensions, uh, and uh, and uh, that's the big push I'm making uh, at the uh, Freedom Center. Uh, that uh, uh, even though it's the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center. Uh, we need to make sure uh, that we uh, delve in depth uh, for scholars that might want to come and do research and things like that. Um, I have a hypothesis about this that I want to just get your opinion on or maybe okay. invite you further research on. Um, I, would, I would hold to what I said 
about the really mountainous counties not having families not having several sleds um, because as far as I know there was no large crop agriculture now I know of places in Virginia where there were iron furnaces where there might have been a concentration of like 50 slaves uh, there were um, I think that if we mapped these 49,000 people by concentration, I, I can see uh, looking Clark County, that's at the edge of the bluegrass. There would have been large crop agriculture there, cotton or tobacco or something. And I, I bet most of these slaves are going to be in the counties that have a lot of flat land. That's, that's my thing. Um, because you just didn't need them in hillside farming, and and I don't know of slaves being used in the timber industry either, though I could be you know I haven't thoroughly researched it and I can tell uh, that. But I just wanted to get your reaction. Uh, on that. My reaction is this: <clears throat> uh, that. Uh, slavery and slave usage by occupation uh, is not does not hold up uh, that even even though uh, uh, do argues uh, that uh, land has value mm -hmm. because of the slave Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's his argument, that land has value because of the slave. So you take the slave away, then there is no value to the land. Uh, and of course, uh, we... That's why in the bluegrass they started growing horses after we, the slaves we, were free. We, we, we need to be able to move uh, these slaves into new uh, territory. Uh, one, because of uh, uh, having surplus slaves, and so, uh, and, and, and Bancroft uh, 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 tracks uh, the slave exporting states and the slave importing states. Mm -hmm. uh, now, what you are asking mm -hmm. is that inside a particular state, uh, does the occupation of the work that I need to have done uh, determine uh, whether or not uh, I will use uh, slave labor and that it is not profitable uh, for me to invest over here. And, 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 and one of the things that, that uh, we need to be aware of, I think we need to be aware of, uh, there are those persons who uh, are truly anti-slavery persons. And uh, there are those persons who uh, are anti-slavery as long as you get them out of here. Colonization, get them out. Uh, uh, there are those persons who are landless but would own slaves if they had the opportunity. Sure. All right. Uh, 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 so so uh, I don't have the resources, but if I had the resources, I sure as hell would. Uh, uh, so uh, as we examine sort of all of these uh, possibilities and contingencies, I think we need to look at all of them, okay? I'm, I'm uh, uh, quite willing to Yeah, and I said nothing about attitudes or motivation. I have no argument with you about attitudes and motivation. And, 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 and I'm quite willing. I was just talking about land use. And, and I'm, I'm quite willing 
uh, to uh, hay out. I'm not sure that I'm the one that will do it uh, uh, because there are lots of uh, sort of additional studies uh, when you get finished. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, uh, I uh, contend uh, that slavery anywhere by anybody is cruel and inhumane. And you notice nobody has challenged you on that, okay. John, or would. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, I agree. Why did you choose the Eastern Kentucky counties? Um... Because they're part of Appalachia. Oh, I see. Uh, okay. And, and uh, uh, it's fascinating. I'm, I'm going to take two quick seconds. Oh, you're uh, fine. Uh, I uh, and another uh, looked at uh, the three states in Appalachia uh, and uh, sort of uh, the migration pattern from there. Persons coming into uh, Ohio and Appalachian counties uh, didn't come uh, from uh, what we would call the South. Uh, they came uh, from the East. Uh, and uh, there are some fascinating, uh, you know, from uh, uh, West Virginia and so uh, uh, some. I'm sorry, who came from the East? And coming into in my in, in, in migrants uh, into Ohio, which would be a free state, even back when the uh, Mason Dixon line mm -hmm. was the dominant. Uh, uh, coming into uh, the uh, uh, states coming down the Ohio River and bending and so forth. You're talking about all settlers or slave settlers? Well, the people. The no, slaves no, you, themselves. You, 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 Black. Uh, you, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying yeah. to understand. Uh, uh, you uh, can look at uh, the uh, black and mulatto population uh, that uh, settled. Uh, you have to, you don't have to assume uh, there, because there are two situations. Uh, one, um, those who are running away all right, uh, and trying to make their way to Canada, if they're smart, uh, are those who are free or those mulattoes whose white father uh, freed his children and resettled them in Ohio. An absolutely fascinating story is the uh, story of Ralph Quarles, uh, who had a concubine like uh, for essentially 29 years. Uh, he and she uh, died in 1835. He uh, sent uh, his <clears throat> children with money to Chillicothe. Uh, <clears throat> Charles Langston, John Mercer Langston, and Gideon Langston. Uh, Charles Langston uh, uh, ends up marrying uh, Mary Leary, who uh, husband had gone to uh, Harpers Ferry, 
to fight with uh, John Brown was killed. Uh, Charles Langston uh, marries his widow. Uh, and uh, they have a daughter, Caroline Mercer Langston, who marries in Kansas, I believe, marries James Hughes. They have a son, James Mercer Langston Hughes. Mm -hmm. And so you drop the James Mercer, as he did, and Langston Hughes. Now, by some calculation, I assume he's about a fourth generation Appalachian or something like that, okay? <laughs> uh, uh, and John Mercer Langston uh, becomes the first uh, uh, first mulatto admitted to the bar in the state of Ohio. Uh, he uh, goes on to be uh, the founder of the uh, law school at Howard University. Uh, uh, he, he has a town named for him, Langston, Oklahoma, and a university named for him, Langston University. And so, you know, if, 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 as, as you start to peel these onions, uh, there are some very, very uh, interesting uh, kinds of things that bubble up. Uh, Katie, uh, thank you ever so much for indulging me. And no, it was our, our uh, listening pleasure. Thank you so oh, much, oh, John. Listening pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. I know that we're all taking a lot from the presentation. You, you didn't ask others. You, you thank me. <laughs> 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 I do. Thank you so much, John. Uh, 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 thank you very much, and uh, I uh, enjoyed it immensely.